Hi friends, this is Mohamed Jibran and welcome to our C++ tutorials. In this video, I'll be explaining about dynamic memory allocation. What does dynamic uh, memory allocation means? How it is useful? So let's try to understand what does dynamic memory allocation is. Uh, so suppose if you are making a C++ program to store a particular number of phone numbers specified by the users at the runtime, what will you do? You cannot declare the array of 10 or 20 elements because you don't know how many numbers the user will be entering. He may want to enter 1, 10, 20 or even 100 phone numbers at a time. So what you will do to solve such type of problem? Basically you have two ways. The first one is to create a very large array of integer say of 500 elements. In this case if the user wants to store 1 or 500 phone numbers the memory used will always be large ok it is going to s use the same number of amount of memory every time your program executes or the second option what you have to solve such type of problem is to make use of C++ dynamic memory allocation to allocate only the needed amount of memory so these are the two ways you can use to solve your previous problem the first choice is a very bad way of programming Nevertheless, it works fine. You should never employ such an inefficient method of programming. So you are left with only one one choice to use the dynamic memory allocation of C++ programming language. As is clear from the above example, dynamic memory allocation is needed when you don't know the program's memory needs beforehand. You don't know how many numbers your user will be entering. So you cannot enter an array or you cannot take the array of suppose 500 or 1000 uh, numbers to store your numbers because it will uses it will be using a lot of memory so how do you allocate memory memory is allocated by using the keyword new like this okay pointer new data type initializer this part is optional you can use it if you want or you can not you cannot use it if you don't need it Pointer is a valid uh, valid pointer for, for type data type. Okay, then data type is any C valid C plus plus data type integer char whatever you say. Initializer is optional as I already said. If given the newly allocated variable is initialized to that value, you can initialize this value to your this variable. Then this is a basic way by which you can give your uh, pointer a uh, value. This is your pointer new data type integer and now you can display this value in your pointer ok or uh, let's make it down over here to be more clear right so this will allocate the integer value having the initial value as 10 to the pointer ok then by in this example you are giving your value given by the user to your pointer like this you are taking the value c in the value given from the user in the size then this value has passed to your pointer ok this is initialized to your pointer and here you are deleting your pointer this deleting the pointer is very important this is what we did in our previous example also delete ptr this is very example you should do this delete thing because uh, I'll explain the reason in the upcoming slide unless static variables uh, C++ will not free up the memory allocated through dynamic allocation it's your duty to free them up. Delete keyword is used to free up the allocated memory. Whenever static memory variables are declared in the C++ program, they are deleted always whenever the program st uh, stops execution, executing. But if you are uh, doing it dynamically, so you have to delete your variables. Delete pointer. Uh, these arrays are deleted in a slightly different manner like this. Okay, You have to say delete keyword then you are you have to use open and close square brackets and then pointer this is easy to forget your pointers to delete because C++ won't give you warnings or errors to do such stuff but uh, you should always remember to delete your pointers and the reason behind is here since the necessity of dynamic memory is usually limited to specific moments within a program once it is no longer needed it should be freed so that the memory becomes available again for other request of dynamic memory you can use that memory again if you require that in your upcoming program 
if it's not deleted it can hang your computer as it uses all the RAM of your computer or in the worst cases it can even crash your system so that's why it is always advised to uh, delete your pointer whenever you initialize or whenever you give values to it so now let's try to write a program that uses dynamic memory allocation and uh, let's try to write it and see how that program works so for this demonstration we will not be using our class so let me remove it then um, we'll be solving that problem which we solve in our presentation that is to prepare a program that can that will take the u the phone numbers of the user at the run time okay using the dynamic memory location so for this demonstration I'll be needing some integer say PTR and uh, size these two variables integer variables I'll be using then I'll say to the user to how many numbers you want to enter okay then after that I'll take that number and I'll store it in size variable okay then I'll say the pointer is equal to new it's that's the keyword integer which uh, works on size okay the size which is by which is given by the user so now let's take the values uh, from the user using a for loop let's say int i equals to 0 and i should be less than size i should increment now I'll say that let me just close it then see out oops I just forgot this enter the numbers ok see in I'll store that value in the pointer which works on i ok then uh, this is it for this uh, and uh, here I will display everything is over here let me just copy this and paste it over here again the numbers you gave and ok so this is how we are going to display it then after that we are going to delete it as I said you should delete your pointer and close pointer semicolon and now let's try to run our program um, run it again it works how many numbers you want to enter? Say I want to enter three numbers: double one, double two, double three, double four, double five, double six, and uh, double one, double two. The numbers you gave it should print out the numbers. But it's not. oops 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 it should not it should be like this ok it should say ptr which works on i oops my mistake let's run it again uh, this time I'll say two numbers ok get ch is there or not see it's not there that's why I just ran and it just blinked up now it will stay till we have a look on it double one double four double six double eight the numbers you gave are double one double four and double six double eight ok so now let's try to make it more easy to understand 
enter the numbers let's make it plus n enter the number at at i plus 1 okay the numbers you gave at location i plus 1 this is not important but uh, if, if this is just to make your program looking more good or else you can end up with the previous part where we stopped doing it location 1 is ok so now let's run it uh, this will be more better than the previous one how many numbers you want to enter I want to enter 3 numbers enter number at 1 say double eight double nine double zero. enter the number at 2 double zero double eight double five. Enter the number at three double zero double seven double three. The numbers you gave at location one is this as two, and <coughs> at the location three is this. So this is how the program works in the dynamic memory allocation. Hope you understood. Hope you understood how it works. And uh, thanks for watching the video.